when you go to the doctor and you, you uh, go through a test, the test can come back either positive or negative. Positive means that you test, uh, the, the test shows that you have the thing you were tested for. Negative means you don't have the thing you were tested for, at least that's the result of the test. However, those tests are not infallible. We can say that, for instance, a true positive means that you actually have the disease being tested for, and it showed positive. However, there's something a thing called a false positive, which shows it, it came up as a positive result, meaning the test showed that you had the disease, but you actually don't have the disease. It's called a false positive. Um, you can have true negatives, in which case the, sh the test shows a negative result and you do not have the disease, or you can have a false negative, which the, t the test shows a negative result, but you um, actually do have the disease. So, you know, the, we're, we're kind of talking about two separate events here. We're saying you can either test positive or negative. Um, let's call this E, event E. Uh, test shows positive. And F, uh, we have the disease. So if we're talking about a true positive, this would be saying E intersect F. It showed a positive and you have the disease. A false positive means that it showed a positive, but you do not have the disease. So E intersect F complement. Uh, true negative, well, it showed a negative, which means we're an E complement, and you, um, you do have the disease. So that's F, and then, or a true negative, rather. So you do not have the disease. So it shows a negative result, and you do not have the disease. So they're both negatives, um, and the error of both complements rather, and a false negative, which is it shows a negative result, but you actually do have the disease. So this is kind of what if you see this terminology: true positive, false positive, false negative, or true negative. Um, that's what those mean. Um, we're not really going to be using those too incredibly much in this class, but I think it's worth kind of pointing out. Or if you've ever heard of those things, that's what they mean. In any case, in this example, um, it's estimated that five percent of women underneath the age or under the age of forty have breast cancer. Uh, a test is performed on a woman with cancer. Uh, a, a test performed on a woman with cancer delivers a positive result, seventy nine point six percent of the time, while a test performed on a woman that does not have a cancer does not have cancer results and delivers a negative result ninety point two percent of the time. So. These are the sorts of ways that you can get this information. You can say, okay, if this person do, does have the cancer, we already know she has the cancer. We're trying to determine the effect, the efficacy of this test. We give her the test, and only you know just under 80% of the time it actually delivers, delivers a positive result. Versus testing it on someone else that does not have cancer, it only delivers a negative result 90% of the time. <clears throat> so that's the particular test, and oftentimes the uh, when you're talking about the efficacy of a test, this is the way that, that you give those. Um, this is one of the ways you can give the, the, the you can tell how efficacious the, the test is. All right, so uh, let's find the probability that a woman, that he woman, that a woman has cancer given a positive test result. So, um, a woman goes in and gets a gets gets a test. She doesn't know she has cancer or not, uh, but the but it shows a positive test. We're trying to figure out what is the probability that she actually has cancer. So um, let's figure out what kind of values we have here. I'm going to um, instead of the disease, we're going to say uh, has cancer. All right, let's write each of these values that we saw up above down uh, using E and F, so I don't have to kind of read through things quite so much. Um, it's estimated that 5% of women under the age of 40 have breast cancer. That's, um, I'm going to assume that that's the overall population we're talking about. Therefore, the probability of F is equal to 0 0.05. Without knowing anything else about a random person, a random woman you're testing, you, you say that there's a 5% chance that she has cancer, uh, breast cancer in this case. Um, a test performed on a woman with cancer delivers a positive result 79.6% of the time. So it is known that she has cancer. In other words, given F, the probability that it delivers a positive result, so the probability of E given F, is 0.796. Okay. 
the test performed on a woman that does not have cancer, so it's known that she does not have cancer, so given F complement, delivers a negative result 90.2% of the time. E complement. The probability of E complement, given F complement, is 0 0.902. It is important when you're writing these down that you don't swap the order of these. But the probability of E given F and the probability of F given E are two very different things. Um, all right, so when we're trying to set up our tree diagram, let's figure out which way would make sense for this tree diagram to go. Well, we know the raw probability of F, and given the direction we've gone on F, we can figure out the, the probability of, of E. So that's actually, I'm going to say the probability of F comes first. This gives us 0 0.05 up here, and thus the probability of her not having cancer without knowing anything else is 0.95. Okay. Um, up here, we have the probability that it shows a positive result given that she has cancer. The probability of E given F, we were told that that is 0.796. The probability of E complement given F, so the probability that it shows a negative result given that she has cancer. Um, I'm going to use my complement rule to figure this one out. 1 minus 0.796, which gives me 0 0.204. Um, let's see, we were told also the probability of E complement given F complement. Notice this is the one going down here because it's E complement. We've already gone down once, so give the given F complement part here, and we're going down again because it's the probability of E complement. That is 0 0.902. And so this one up here, the probability of E given F complement. Um, the probability we go up with the second, with, with the, uh, that it shows a positive result given that she does not have cancer. Um, I'm, I will go ahead and do 1 minus 0 0.902 to get 0 0.098. So if we were to multiply these things together, 0 0.05 times 0.796, that's this value up here, that gives us 0 0.0389. Uh, so I took the 0 0.05 times the 796. 0 0.05 times 0 0.204. gives me 0 0.0102. 0 0.95 times 0 0.098. You want to make sure you have your decimal places correct there. Uh, 0 0.0931. And lastly, 0 0.95 times 0 0.902, which gives me 0.8569. And I would like to kind of check my work here, um, make sure all of these actually do sum to 1. So I'm going to add them up. We get 0 0.0398 plus 0 0.0102 plus 0 0.0931. And I didn't round anything here, so I expect this to be exact. And you can see it does give me exactly 1. So I can be fairly certain that I've set this tree diagram up correctly. Um, so the question here is find the probability that a woman that has cancer, uh, find the woman, find the probability a woman has cancer given a positive test result. So the probability she has cancer, so the probability of F, given a positive test result, the probability of F given E specifically. And um, I guess I kind of went forward with this knowing that it was a Bayes theorem just because of the section we're in. But um, you can see we were given the probability of E given F, E complement given F complement. We're looking for the probability of F given E. That's how I knew that we were going to need the Bayes theorem to be able to complete this one. So to find the probability of F given E, I will find the probability of F intersect E divided by the probability of E. This is the general probability, um, the conditional probability that we've seen. So the probability of F intersect E, that's this one up here, it's 0 0.0398, and the probability of E, we have to use the law of total probability to find it, uh, both of these branches, so this one right here has an E happening and that one has an E happening as well, so we'd use the law of total probability to say 0 0.0398 plus 0 0.0931, that will give me my denominator, when I add those together, that will give me the probability of E. So, 0 0.0398 divided by parentheses 0 0.0398 plus 0 0.0931 close my parentheses and we get 0 0.2995 so let's interpret this 
without knowing anything about a woman, um, other than she's a woman under 40, we say that there is a 5% chance that she has breast cancer because we get that from it's estimated 5% of all women under 40 have breast cancer. Um, so without knowing anything about the woman, we say there's a 5% chance. She goes in and gets a test. She, you know, she takes the, this test and it shows a positive test result. That bumps her up from a 5% chance of having cancer to a about 30% chance of having cancer. You'll notice this is nowhere near the 80% or 90%, the numbers that we saw in this. Um, it only bumps it up to 30%. Uh, this is because there, it's still a very good chance that, that uh, well, if we look at this, uh, of those that tested positive, you can see about 4% of the population, let's say we, we sent in every woman, about 4% of the population would actually have cancer and it would show a positive test result about 9% of the, the population would show a positive test result, but that this would actually be a false positive here. So there's actually about a 9% chance that there is, that um, for just a random person without knowing anything about them, that it would be a false positive, and there's a about 4% chance that it's a true positive. So because you'll notice that this uh, this is a 4%, that's a 9% chance, this is a little bit over double. Uh, twice as many people are going to get a false positive than a true positive, and thus a little bit under a third of the total people would actually have uh, be that true positive. So that's, like I said, Bayes' theorem.